Good morning, everyone. Uh, over the past holiday weekend, uh, I was kind of under the weather, and I missed uh, the holidays. And so what I want to say to all of you, since I could not make the two services, the New Year's Eve service and the New Year's services, I wanted to wish all of you a Happy New Year. During my time off in the house, because I was under the weather, uh, two, two things came to me during that time while I was recuperating. And uh, it may sound like a cliche or cliches, uh, and I'm sure you've heard it before, but I'll tell you, one thing, the first thing for me was, if you don't have health, good health, there's a lot of things you'll be missing out. So please, deeply appreciate your good health every day you wake up in the morning. Second thing was, because I had to stay in the house, I could not celebrate Christmas or New Year's. And I realized again how important being with the family was important to me. And so I would say to you, whenever you have an opportunity to be with family, you know, whatever the occasion, please be with them and simply enjoy them. So with that, I'd like to move on with my Dharma message for today. During my time as a minister's assistant, you know, I'm always looking out for articles about Buddhism, both to further educate me on the subject matter and to inspire me as I pursue my own way down the path of Shin Buddhism. One article I read from a young minister who wrote this article about the movie, The Wizard of Oz, which was first shown on television in the year 1956, over 60 years ago. The article describes the great parallels between that movie and Buddhism. I have watched it so many times that I could, where I've lost count on the number of times I have seen it. Since the article was written over 30 years ago, I have edited this article to fit the information to our times in the 21st century. And with his permission, I would now like to share this revised article with all of you. As all of you know, the main character, Dorothy, goes on a long, lost journey in her dreams after being struck on the head during a tornado. Dorothy finds herself in the land of Oz, and must somehow find her way back to her home in Kansas. <coughs> Buddhism says that we sentient beings are also lost. We are born into this world of chaos, confusion, pain, and suffering. The path to enlightenment is essentially a path leading out of our dark world of suffering into a world bright with truth and serenity. In Jodo Shinshu Buddhism, this is talked about even more concrete, in more concrete terms. We are taught to seek a pure land. While this war world is of ignorance and suffering, the pure land is not. It is, as Dorothy puts it, a world of somewhere over the rainbow in an ideal realm that exists only in her heart as she faces the difficulties of growing up on a farm in Kansas. We also yearn for a world beyond this realm of suffering, much like Dorothy hoped for it as she sang Somewhere Over the Rainbow. That world is called the Pure Land in our Jewish and Jewish tradition. And the yellow brick road that leads us to it is the path of the Nemutsu. A life of saying, Namo Amidabutsu, amidst our joys and sorrows of human life, which will lead us to the Pure Land. The Pure Land, unlike Christianity, is not an escapist world, nor is it a heaven of everlasting life. The Pure Land is the great world of enlightenment, talked about in geographical terms, so that we sentient beings can understand this concept. To seek birth in the Pure Land is at the same time to seek enlightenment, to discover the world without the sufferings that we know it in our world. In Dorothy's journey along 
the yellow bird path road. Her greatest fear was the wicked witch of the West, who constantly threatened to take her life. The wicked witch of the West in our, in our life represents civil unrest, mass shootings, wars, destruction, disease, sickness, death, and many other fears that haunt us today. The scene where Dorothy is trapped in the castle and the wicked witch threatens to kill her when the land sands of the hourglass run out is also very symbolic. Buddhism, too, says that our life is passing ever so swiftly. While we might think that we are still young and will live forever, this is really not the case as we are really only kidding ourselves if we do if we do believe that. Life is passing us by quickly, just like the sands of the hourglass. Unless we awaken to the fact and utilize this time to find the truth of the Buddha Dharma that transcends life and death, we will someday find ourselves with very few grains of sand left, wondering where did the time go and what did we do with our lives. Dorothy was fortunate to have met the scarecrow, Tin Man, and the lion who helped her on her journey. If not for her newfound friends, perhaps Dorothy would not made it out of the land of Oz. On the path of the Nebuts, we meet good friends and fellow travelers along the way who will encourage, assist, and inspire us as we journey through life together. A temple sangha knows that we are all on the path of the Nebuts together, where our common bond is a religious one more than a social one. Dorothy, after her incredible journey to meet the wizard, was able to return home and awaken from her dream, surrounded by her worried family and farm workers. Although she tries to share her adventures with them, she is met with disbelieving ears. Although she is unable to convince the others that her adventure was real, Dorothy now has a totally different perspective on her family, and life in Kansas. She realizes the ideal world that she thought before was that she sought before was really home itself. Somewhere over the rainbow was right in her own backyard. Now the family that she was angry with for giving away her dog Toto is the family she would not trade away for anything in the world. Kansas is not some hot, forlorn place in nowhere land, but it's exactly where she wants to be. As the movie ends, the unforgettable line expressed by Dorothy of there's no place like home truly represents how wonderful we feel after a long trip from work or vacation. In Pure Land Buddhism, after awakening to the light of the Pure Land, for the world of enlightenment, we do not permanently stay there. There is a returning to the unenlightened or samsara world to now lead others out of the land of suffering into the world of enlightenment. Professor Shigaraki Sensei to this minister said, quote, Don't think the pure land is a heavenly paradise. Actually, there is no one there. For once, no one is, for once one has been there, one does not remain. Instead, one returns to this world with the all important task of leading others back to the pure land. Unquote. Before awakening from our own self ego and into the light of the pure land, our world is dark and drab, a world of constant suffering. Our work is exactly that, just work. Wives are looking more unattractive and complain too much about their husbands. Well, in my case, no. I'll hear it. I'll hear it. Husbands work hard and don't spend enough time with the family. 
children don't appreciate what the parents give them. And parents never give their children enough freedom. But after seeing the light of the Pure Land, it shows us in the true light with regards to our appreciation of being able to live our lives, our Dharma eyes are suddenly opened like Dorothy's eyes were after her return to Kansas. Now the job that we didn't appreciate before, we wouldn't trade for him. The wife that we thought had lost her beauty is now more beautiful than she ever was. The husband that the wife complained about is the most understanding of bodhisattvas, which is a seeker of truth, who appreciates and loves his wife. Parents are able to respect their children rather than demand their children respect their parents. And the children will be grateful to their parents for giving them the gift of life. For your information, the young minister who authored this article over 30 years ago is our own supervising ring mom, Reverend Marvin Harada. Thank you, Reverend Harada, for allowing me to share this wonderful article. As I read Reverend Harada's article several months ago, I realized the theme of home has always had a special place in my heart. During my travels, the thought of returning home near the end of every trip would always overwhelm me. What was it about home that held that special allure for me, always whispering to me to return? Come home, Keith. Come home. As I thought about the constant yearning, I realized that I had always taken my home for granted. After returning, I always had this special feeling about home. Now I know home will always welcome me with open arms and protect me from the hectic life or the hectic pace of our busy world. Home allows me to sleep in my warm, cozy bed without having to worry about where I'm going to sleep every night shower and bathe to keep my body clean, wear clean, comfortable clothes, have access to food without having to scrounge around for it in garbage bins, relax without having to be judged by others, and above all, provide a sanctuary of comfort and peace. Home is my place where dreams that I dare to dream sometimes really do come true. Before I finish today's message, I have a special treat for all of you. Ms. Ellie Mizushima has consented to sing her rendition of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Ellie?